There's that pitching coach Deluxe. That's Mike Maddox. Everywhere he's been, he's uh, put together great staffs. Now we're trying to do the same with this Texas ball club. It's got a lot of young pitchers and maybe uh, some free agents down the road. Jack Glider, of course, is there. Uh, so we got a lot. And Rocker is there, the kid they drafted a couple years ago. We got a lot to do with him. He's a good man. He says hello. Mike, welcome. How are you today, pal? Okay? Doing great, dog. Thanks for having me on, partner. Uh, we got two things here that I want to get to before Texas. One, these holes in one. You've had two in one round on this Army-Navy course. I got to hear the discussion there on these part threes. In one oh. round. Go ahead. Let me hear. <laughs> well, it was kind of fun. You know, we teed off early in the morning. Um, so the first one uh, was into the sun. Nobody could see the shot. You could hear it hit the pin, but, of course, everybody's racing to get in their carts, and I thought that one had a chance, but nobody could see it go because it was into the sun. So we played dumb. We're looking all around the back of the green, but finally somebody goes and looks in the hole, and there it is. So, uh, you know, it was, it was great. It was a fun start of, the, start of the day, and then we go on the backside and get to the 14th hole, and uh, I'll be darned, same thing kind of happened. Um, there it landed in the hole. I let somebody else find it, and to get one is unbelievable. To get two in the same round was silly. I just knew that Jack Flirty was going to throw a perfect game or a no-hitter that night. Phenomenal. Had you had a hole in one before? I had, yes. Yeah, that was number uh, five and six. So it had oh, been a so while. Had, oh, five and six. Wow, you had four. All right. Well, what did you shoot that day? Was that a course record with two with two aces? Did you have a course record? <laughs> the nerves got to me, dog. The nerves got to me, man. But uh, I think the scorecard says seventy-two. But uh, would have been nice to break par with a couple good. of. Eights. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you would have liked a little better. That's pretty good. That's the first thing. Second thing is you got to help me out here. I didn't like it, and so you can explain. Game one, Phillies. Marmol came out early. I thought maybe he'd leave him in, and now bullpen. You used the closer an awful lot when he was wild. I'm sure you've thought about it a lot. This is the first I've had a chance to talk to you about it. Explain game one against Philadelphia, which is the key to the series. Early in the game in that ninth inning. Go ahead. I'm interested. Well, I, I think if, uh, you know, it goes back to what happened on, what was it, Tuesday when um, Ryan Helsley went out there and threw against Pittsburgh. He got a, a little broken bat comebacker to him. He went down to break his fall and uh, jammed his finger. So uh, on he come out of the game, and then on Wednesday he was, you know, sore but better. And then Thursday we had a workout, and we told him to take it easy, but everything was, you know, all arrows pointed up that he was going to be fine. So he played his catch. He did a little light spinning of the ball. I took the ball away, said, no, if it feels this much better after 24 hours, the next 24 is going to be feel really fine. So uh, then Friday rolls around to game one. All the pregame stuff went well. Once again, I told him less is more on this thing, but he was really adamant about um, making sure that he was good. And after he did his full warm-up uh, routine pregame, he was fine. He actually came into the eighth inning and – Got us out of that thing with a couple punch outs and or a couple outs had a strikeout and a, got an out. So he was he was fine. Then he came in, strikes out Reese Hoskins to start the inning. And then um, what happened after that? It was a base hit by Ramudo and a walk to Harper. At that point, he started spraying the ball. I get on the phone. I missed a couple pitches to uh, Castellanos. And um, you say I I wish I could have seen a couple of those pitches, but I was on the phone communicating with the bullpen and then I did see the pitch to bomb and that's where we went out there and it was tightened up on him and he was about you know 20 some odd pitches deep but you know for the first 15 pitches he had no issues so we didn't really didn't look to see like anything was wrong because he was you know throwing strikes with good stuff he's still throwing 100 miles an hour and doing what he did all year and he was so good for us all year you knew that he was just going to get it done. All right, Quintana there in the 72 pitches in the top of the sixth. He was going great. You guys took him out a little early, I thought. Explain. Go ahead. Oh, we had it kind of scripted out that if we could get to a certain part of the lineup, um, you know, we well, we had it all drummed down. We said, you know, the, uh, the tough part here is going to be when um, Quintana goes out there and he just lights out. I said, well, we got to stay disciplined in what we're doing. I think the uh, if you looked at uh, Hoskins and um, – he was a, he's got a huge uh, righty lefty split. You know, he's a lefty killer and uh, he had gotten him out a couple times. And we just figured that that was a time to bring in a right hander, especially in Jordan Hicks, who's uh, definitely going to keep the ball in the ballpark and he could face those guys. And 
And he did. You know, he came in. Uh, he ended up. Uh, he, he got the outs. All right. So he finishes the sixth, and then we go out in the seventh, and we throw up the donut there, and we throw up the donut in the eighth inning, and it came down to the ninth. So, you know, whether we took Quintana out too early or too late, it water under the bridge because we we got to our guy in the ninth inning with the two run lead the way we wanted. So I think all all moves excellent. were were fine. Excellent. Uh- Excellent job there. Thanks for answering those questions. Uh, as a baseball fan, I was curious. All right, let's do Texas now. Uh, a great opportunity for you. you got a great manager to work with. Uh, everywhere you've been, you've been unbelievably successful. Big challenge ahead. Let me get your thoughts. Go ahead. Well, you know what? Uh, i tell you what, dog. I was, um, you know, coming home, ready to slow down. I took a little vacation. I went over to Scotland to enjoy a week of golf. And I saw that the Rangers hired Bochy. And I was like, wow, Bruce Bochy, man, that's that's pretty cool. You know, he was out of the game for a couple of years, got right back in it. And so I started to revisit what I wanted to do. And I said, you know what, maybe uh, maybe that's something for me. So I actually uh, welcomed that um, Texas wanted to speak with me and was able to come down and meet with Chris Young, um, get with some of the uh, grassroots that he believes in. And we have a lot of commonalities in what we believe as far as how to pitch and and how you should really go about it. And it was refreshing to hear that. And all of a sudden, my appetite became uh, pretty big on wanting to come back and join the Rangers and, you know, do this, have, have start, start a new thing. You know, it was good when I left. And to come back, let's start a new, a new fun fest for the fans, man. They got um, some really nice players. The infield's pretty solid. I'm not real familiar with the outfield. I know we got a couple of pitchers that are – you know, have pretty good track record. Martin Perez, big year last year. Jonathan Gray, big arm, um, can do some things. I saw him pitch in Colorado. If you can succeed there, you can succeed anywhere. And then I got a tour of the ballpark. And let me tell you about this place, man. It is. It's the cat's meow. It is unbelievable. It's a Shangri-La. I've never seen any place like it. So very attractive to players. I would think that this is the, um, the onset of good things to come. And I really bought in with Chris Young. And of course, with Bruce Bochy, proven winner, um, tremendous track record. I've been blessed to have Ron Washington for those years and, you know, how great that was. And then to a couple years with Dusty and how great he was. And now I get, you know, Bruce Bochy, who's, you know, has 2,000 wins and three championships. And I just feel very fortunate to be in this situation right now. All right, before we get to Scotland Golf, one last thing here as far as your success is concerned. What is this? Everywhere you've been, you've done it. I mean, you're a supreme pitching coach. What is it mental, physical, quickly? What's the asset of Mike Maddox that makes you so good at what you do? Um, Stick by my convictions, uh, what I think it takes to compete at the major league level help players understand themselves and try to help them be the best version of what they can do. But number one, you got to be able to pitch with your fastball, pitch with your fastball, change speeds, um, take ownership of the plate, take ownership of what you do and be accountable to your teammates. Fair enough. Courses. I went there when I was 60. I played them all. Uh, Kings born. I love the best. I thought St. Andrews is a little overrated. Let me hear your thoughts quickly on that golf wise. Go ahead. Yeah, Kings Barn played that a couple times. I loved it. Remind me a lot of Spanish Bay out at Pebble Beach. A lovely golf course. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Kind of an American Scottish Lynx is what it was. The old course played there in Carnoustie. Loved Carnoustie, but the old course takes the cake, man. That was it for me. I, I just loved the uh, the crossovers, the double greens. The uh, if, if you didn't have a caddy, you wouldn't know where the next hole was because you're hitting the double green, but no, you're playing the red flag. They're playing the white flag. So it was. Kind of the caddies were traffic cops, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a ton of fun. Wow. So you love the old course. So all my guys thought it was overrated. You know more than me. Great two holes in one. You damn right you know more than me. Great job, <laughs> Mike. Good luck. We will, talk, <laughs> we will talk along the way. Thanks very much here today. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for having me on.